Welcome back guys, this is Drumline here. And today I got another reaction video that is for the drummer, Bobby Yorzombek. So this actually came as a recommendation from my Elden Ring metal drum cover playthrough. It was in one of the comments to check this drummer out. And as soon as I looked him up, uh, just the list of accolades and the things that he has accomplished, uh, the list is long. I was looking at an article on uh, drummerworld.com, which I'm going to link the article in the, uh, the description to this video because it would take me it would take me 10 to 15 minutes probably just to even go through just everything that this man has done. So I highly recommend you check out the article or just uh, look up Bobby on your own to see just everything that he's accomplished because it's it's absolutely incredible. He is currently the drummer for the band Fate's Warning. And he also drums for George Strait, who is a country artist. So uh, obviously just with that alone, it speaks to his versatility. So the two songs that was recommended to me was School and um, and uh, Peppered Cancer. So I basically did a coin toss to see which one to look at first. And it ended up being Peppered Cancer. So that's the one we're going to check out today. And... Uh, I'm just going to look at the video from from a not not a, a critiquing standpoint, but just to maybe learn because um, a guy like this that's got so many amazing, incredible years of drumming experience under his belt, uh, I this is going to be educational for me as a drummer. I will give my thoughts and insights based on the things that I observe, but for the most part. Um, I'm going to try to learn something from this. So let's go ahead and check this video out and see what this legend has in store for us with this playthrough. <laughs> already stopping the video right out the gate i can already see that his kit is set up for a right-handed player because of the position of the hi-hats uh he has actually that looks like the only ride symbol that he has on the left side of the kit which you do i mean i even have two ride symbols but my primary ride symbol is on the right from my right because I'm a right-handed drummer, but his ride symbol is his only looks like his only ride symbol is on the left, and he is playing that skank beat with his left hand, but he's doing it and I honestly, his kit looks like it's set up for a righty, but he's playing it in a left-handed way. So already, that is a testament to his limb independence. Just just with that alone. I, wow, impressive already. Okay, let's go. Yeah, this is definitely there's a lot of progressive stuff going on here with the uh with the time signature and uh the complexity of the changes that he's doing. This type of music is very difficult to metronomically pin down uh because you have to be comfortable with time signatures that aren't in 4/4. Four, four. You know, 1 2 3 4 2 2 3 4. It's nothing like that. I I wasn't counting, but that definitely wasn't 4/4. Four, four.
I couldn't even tell which one was his dominant foot by that. It looked like it could have been either. I Honestly, I don't even know. Uh, he's a, a barefoot player. I made a comment about uh, playing barefoot or playing in socks on my uh, on my Chris Turner reaction because Chris Turner, the drummer for Ocean's Eight Alaska, he's a he plays in his socks, and I was talking about how playing like that could possibly provide more more feel. You can you can more easily feel the bass drum beater hit the batter head of the bass drum. I play in shoes just because I prefer the grip of shoes on the pedal. Uh, but barefoot, I mean, there's no doubt. You're going to be able to tell exactly when that beater hits the bass drum. And that's pretty important. For stuff like this, that, that's definitely important because the, the time signature, the, the, the syncopated rhythms, everything has to be lined up so tightly. You need to know exactly when these notes are hitting. Not just for the sake of making sure that it sounds right with the music, but so you can make sure that you keep, you're keeping track of your own timing as you're playing this and that way you don't either fall behind or end up in front of the beat etc Yet again, I'm stopping the video. Apologies for that. But there's there's a, a lot going on here. So his kit, going back to how it's set up, this is kind of like what you would consider like a classically uh, set up metal type drum, drum kit set up because of the placement of his cymbals for one thing. He's got a china way up here. Uh, he's got a crash over here. There's cymbals damn near behind his head uh when you do when you have symbols or a china um or like in the case of like neil perp uh, rest in peace to him uh you know having you know a gong or whatever you know behind you when you go to hit that kind of thing it's it's big and it's flashy it, it, there's a lot of movement and it stands out to the crowd uh, when you're when you're making big sweeping mo movements like that, you know, so it's very entertaining to see. I honestly, I don't know how comfortable I would be playing something like that. I'd, I'd have to get used to that because muscle memory is extremely important when you're navigating around the kit, especially doing uh, the the kind of movements that Bobby's doing. Uh, he's I mean he's all over the place with uh, with his sound sources and um. Yeah, it's so far just incredible stuff, <laughs> and you know, kits like this they have a they have a big, a big stage presence, so to speak, because there's so much going on, and it, it's going to catch the attention of the audience. So. Okay, um, wow. Yeah, the, this song is super involved. Like, there is, it's not just the, it's not just the time signature changes. It's everything that he's doing rhythmically on the drums goes really well with the guitar parts. I mean, it's all matched up perfectly. And there's a lot happening with the guitar riffs, too. To be able to this a song like this, 
repetition and a ton of practice because you have to memorize these changes too. You're not only having to understand as a drummer what you're what you're supposed to play to keep the timing and the rhythms you know going in, in the song, but you have to also be extremely musical. You have to really kind of exude musicianship with what you're playing because you got to compliment the guitars as well in order to play this. So you're in a sense it's like you're playing with the guitars doing like their parts in a way but also playing the role of the drummer too keeping the time which means you need to you need to know exactly what the guitars are doing for chord changes, what kind of rhythms they're doing and you got to find out what sound sources on the kit complement that and he's doing it beautifully here. That's a lot to keep up here. You know, it's like by the time by the time you've get you got one type of rhythm like figured out and you and you're in the pocket with that, the guitars are now playing something new and you need to be right on that, right on time, every single time that happens. So it's 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 just a testament to just how like his internal clock, his metronome inside like his internal metronome, so to speak, how well tuned it is to be able to keep the keep time in these rhythms and to mimic what the guitars and the bass players are doing. I'm <sighs> It's, it sounds like I'm probably babbling in this video. I'm just impressed. i running out of words because I'm I'm blown away by what I'm saying. I keep having to stop the video because there's every section has something to talk about. This part is very subdued in the song. There's not a lot going on with the with the guitar parts and the bass. It's it, the song has some has some room to kind of breathe right now. And as a drummer, he still has the duty of keeping time with that. Even when there's a ton of space in the music, you still have to complement that and Respect the fact that, okay, this is a part in the song that's got space, we're letting it breathe, but I still need to play something that not only gives the the, the, the airiness of the, of the section, but it still gives the listener something to help them keep time with what's happening in the song, too. Because a lot of times, people that listen to this, they're not musicians themselves. They under, they, they're listening to the, the song from... A, a, a casual perspective like they they know they hear things that they might like they might not be able to like explain what they're hearing but they know they like it for one reason or another and they know that there's a rhythm that they can maybe you know, nod their heads to uh they don't know what the time signature is or what bpm the song is in they just know that they can do this and it goes with what they're hearing it's the, it's the drummer's job to keep that there you see drummers like Danny Carey with Tool because a lot of their songs are uh, rhythmically and metronomically complex in the sense that there's a lot of progressive elements there. But yet the people that listen to Tool can still they still know when to how to vibe to the song because Danny is able to play things that still rhythmically make sense with what the song is trying to convey as the message. And as a listener, you can you can uh, kind of lock in with that. Bobby's doing the exact same thing here with this section. He still has things going on that are subdued and and but then as the guitars and and the the bass kind of swells up and starts to put a little bit more a little bit more energy into the section, he's matching that exactly. Like he's playing uh the the the, the rudiments and are a little bit more complex. So he's adding some more cymbal work to help with swell and 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 uh, add some more energy to the section. As the guitars and, and bass are doing that, he's doing the exact same thing. Perfectly lined up.
I really want to stop it again and talk about this section too, but I'm, you know, screw it. I'm, okay, I'm stopping the video again. I said I wasn't gonna do it, but you know what? Screw it. I, I, there's too, there's too much amazing stuff going on here. The, the guitars and the bass part, as it, as it grows in intensity, and you can hear it with the guitar chords. Uh, it went from, and I'm not a guitarist, so. I can only speak with what I'm hearing. I don't know the exact terminology for, you know, the way chords are played or the different distortion sounds or anything like that. But there's a lot, there's a little more crunch in the guitar part here. And as a drummer, he's complimenting even the tone that the guitars are giving by adding more double bass. He's adding more cymbal hits in with that. And it, it gives the listener a sense of, okay, the song has picked up aggression. Now, it, it, it makes it feel, it, it gives it more of a, of a heavy feel, which the two sections prior to that was so subdued and laid back. And even the tone of the guitars was, you know, small, even, you know, just kind of, you know, chill. It was just kind of, you know, laid back in a way. Uh, it's not just Bobby just randomly hitting drums or hitting toms, you know, hitting the snare whenever he wants or just hit, hitting cymbal sources just uh, just randomly. Everything is a calculated hit. He's like a uh, a magician and a mathematician on the kit, like all at the same time with how he's doing this. Back to the opening roof. Stop the video again. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, so this riff right here, and when I was reading the article on Bobby, it did mention that he he tracks some music for uh, the video game uh, Sonic and the Black Knight. And when I hear this riff right here, and the way that the guitar tone sounds with with that with that kind of prog metal skank beat that he's got going on behind it, I can I swear I can hear like the uh, the the current generation uh, Sonic. The, I I swear I can hear something like similar tone wise in one of the levels. I can picture Sonic, you know, uh, running up a loop and collecting rings. I I can almost hear that here. It sounds really. F was it maybe from Sonic Generations? I don't know, but I, I, I see like the the correlation with that, and you know that, that's really that's really dope. Yep, it was uh wow. All right, so this video. I, again, I don't mean to sound like I'm babbling or stumbling over my words. I'm when I do these reaction videos, I'm not editing or jump cutting things. I want people to see like 100% like my authentic like reactions and and thoughts and opinions on the things that I'm looking at. I'm not chopping stuff out. Of, I'm not taking nothing out of this video. You guys are gonna see it all, even if it should be edited out or whatever, because I want people to see exactly like what I'm going through when I watch this. That's the point of a reaction video, in my opinion. Uh, this guy's got me fumbling over my words. Uh, I'm inspired, but also like a little intimidated at the same time, just because the complexity of what he was playing and to be able to keep track of all the changes in this song and know exactly what to play and when, that's a testament to his experience, years of practice, and absolute dedication to mastery of the drumming craft. Uh, I'm going to look for more. I'm actually going to, I'm going to check out school. Uh, I'm definitely going to do that real soon. I got to take time to cool my brain off and wrap my head around what I just saw here. So if you guys got to the end of this video, um, salute to y'all and thank y'all for checking this out. And thank you for the subscriber that, that recommended Bobby to me in my last video. Um, yeah, this was absolutely incredible and, and a true clinic from start to finish so in any case if you guys enjoyed this reaction uh 
please add a like, uh, comment, and if you're not subscribed, um, I, I would love if you would hit the subscribe button. Uh, I, I'm grateful to anybody that takes the time to watch and, and support the videos that I put out. I do reactions like this. I've got uh, some drum covers up. Uh, I do uh, drumming to original compositions as well, which I'm actually going to be doing another one. Um, matter of fact, as soon as I finish uh, rapping on this video, I'm going to I'm going to work on a new composition and actually I want to go ahead and and uh, get it tracked and mix mastered and, and go ahead and put it out sometime later tonight. So um, again, thank you all so much. Uh, I'm open to more suggestions, recommendations, constructive criticism. I, I see all the all the comments that are left. Uh, I try to um, engage and and respond to all comments that are left uh, because I enjoy talking to people that watch you know that are checking my stuff out I want I want you to see yourself as part of a journey along with me and not just some number for YouTube you know you guys are you guys are important to me if you're taking the time to watch what I'm what I'm doing and to respond to that I I, I love and appreciate that and I'm gonna let people know that you know even if for some crazy reason I end up like, actually having a somewhat successful YouTube channel, that's not going to change. I'm still going to talk and interact with everybody. Because, I mean, quite frankly, you guys are the, the backbone to all of this. You know, it's to provide entertainment for you all. And to maybe offer some insight to the world of music and drumming as I've learned over the years. So in any case, that's enough talking and babbling. Thank you all so much. Until next time.